Hi, I'm Zach, and this is another bite-sized build video. If you've been following me on Instagram, you'll know that we recently had a baby. My wife has been begging me to build some wooden toys for our bite-sized baby Claire. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I went about this project. I have been trying to learn how to use Adobe Illustrator, and this was a great project to do so. I was able to create some forest animals as well as some trees and a mountain using the image trace tool. I tried to apply a rough scale to each animal so that they were relatively proportional to one another. When I was happy with the shapes, I saved them as SVGs or scalable vector graphics, which makes it easy to pull them into other software. I've partnered with Inventables on this project and they were kind enough to send me their 3D carving machine called the X-Carve. Their free software called Easel allows you to create designs by using their built-in shapes, drawing your own, or importing your existing designs. I've been using Easel for a long time and it's absolutely the easiest CNC software I've ever used. I was able to import the SVGs I created in Illustrator and adjust the settings to cut all the way through the material. I recommend testing out your new designs using cheap material before committing to your expensive wood. In the future, I may revisit this project and use some nice maple hardwood. I chose to use some 1x8 and 1x12 inch pine board because this was really an experimental project and it's what I had lying around. With the design ready to go in easel, I cut my stock material out on the miter saw and clamped it into place using the threaded inserts built into the X-Carve's waste board. The software has a little pre-flight checklist, which guides you through the process of setting up your cut. One of the most useful features is the automatic probe to determine your Z height. I've used CNC machines without this feature and it's a real pain. Once everything was set, I pressed go and watched the machine do its thing. I should note that this project is about the simplest thing this machine can do. If you go to the Inventables website, you'll see all sorts of amazing projects that people can do with the X-Carve. As I get more experienced and comfortable, I've got some really cool and complex projects I want to try on this thing, so stay tuned for those. The X-Carve is done cutting the shapes out of my piece of wood. If I flip it over, you'll notice a couple of things. The first thing you'll notice is that the bit didn't go all the way through in some of the parts and it left a small layer of material still left in there. That's called an onion skin. That's really easy to take care of. I'll just take some sandpaper and, and finish that off and it'll expose the cut all the way through. The second thing you'll notice are the tabs that were left in place. Easel, the software used to cut out these shapes, will put in little tabs in here. And the reason for that is when you cut a shape out of material, you don't want the shape to come loose and potentially run into the spindle or get caught up, it will cause some damage. So the software will put these little tabs in there that keep them in place. They're really easy to get rid of. You just take a little utility knife, cut through, and then you can sand it flat. I could have just stopped right there and left these animal shapes the way they are. However, I think that just the simple profile looks a little boring. I'm gonna take them all to the belt sander and remove as many of the 90 degree corners as possible. This gives the animals a more three-dimensional shape and really makes a huge difference in their overall appearance. You can see here that I'll pause every few seconds and look at both sides of the animal to make sure that I'm sanding the same contours on each side. I want these to be fairly symmetrical. Since my last video, I've earned my first Patreon supporter and his name is Paul. Paul, thank you so much for making these videos possible. Right now, he is the only one who gets to see and listen to the extra content that I create just for Patreon supporters. For every video I release, I've started publishing an additional audio recording called Bite Size Blab. You'll get to hear more background information that doesn't make it into the videos. I don't think Paul wants to hog all these rewards to himself, so why don't you use the link in the description and go check out my Patreon page. If you feel like I've earned your support, you'll be able to join our small community at one of the different reward tiers. If Patreon isn't your thing, I've started to get YouTube memberships up and running. My plan is to have the same reward tiers on both platforms. I ran into a little bit of a problem here. I knew that the material that I selected was only three quarter inch and that some of these bigger pieces would probably have a little bit of a hard time standing up. 
I've tested all of these and they all stand up, but I want them to be really sturdy because they're toys. So I had a couple of options here. If I had thought about this ahead of time, I probably could have cut out two of every shape and just glued them together and given them the double thickness and that would have helped them stand up. But I had already started sanding and it was a little bit too late for that option. So a second option I came up with was just to make these little round or oval circles that they stand on. So I've got to glue these and secure these in place and they'll just be a little stand for these bigger pieces to stand up to keep them steady. I want to introduce you guys all to Claire. This is my little baby girl. She's seven weeks old. I decided to bring her in as a little shop buddy to help me do this glue up. I'm not using any power tools. I'm just doing a quick little glue up. I did some research on what kinds of paint are safe for wooden toys and settled on non-toxic acrylic paint. I asked my wife Rebecca for some help because she is a really great artist and this was way outside of my wheelhouse. She's trained and taught for several years as a Waldorf teacher, and they focus a lot on imaginative play, and so she wanted these toys to be very simple with only one or two colors on each and no distinct features on the face. This was definitely an experimental project, but I'm very happy with the results. Hopefully this project has inspired you to make something that you're excited about. If you're new here, you may not know that I make a lot of other project videos like this. I'll put a couple of links here to those videos so you can watch them. If you enjoy project videos like this, please consider subscribing to Bite Size. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. My name is Zach, and I'll see you next time.